welcome to Crew TV. I am Super Stacy, and I'm Pastor Jesse. Yes, that's right. And this is Crew TV. So um, I don't don't know what else to say other than that. Bye. Welcome to Crew TV. I'm Pastor Jesse. I'm Super Stacy, and we are so excited to get to connect with you guys again about everything we got going on here at Crew, which is not a whole lot, but you know what? We are doing stuff. We um, are. That's right, yeah. So this weekend, we had a lot of fun at Celebrate America, our Celebrate America services. My favorite part, to be honest, was um, th there was a couple of really cool things, but my favorite thing was Saturday night when the cannons went off at the wrong time. And um, and it was kind of really hilarious. If you caught it, it was great. But it was one thousand percent memorable. <laughs> My favorite part was the um, the video about Stu Headley. We've oh, had him at crew yes. a couple of times. Yeah. His story is so inspiring. Yeah. Very cool. Definitely. Hope you guys get a chance to check that out. But hey, things we got going on. We are still doing our live services as a whole church at um, let's see, it's Saturday at six p.m., which is kind yep. of an irregular time, and then Sunday at 9 a.m. Those two times are what we are doing right now. If you guys want to come and hang out, we're always here and we're just out there doing our live services in the parking lot. So come and join us. Yes, and we're there because we really want to see you. So please, if you see us, help us see you. That's right. Maybe. Come say hi. And we also have our Wednesday night Zoom hangouts. Um, those are at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays and we send the links to those in our weekly emails. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions about how to like actually show up in those Zoom meetings, please contact us, crew at shadowmountain.org. We want to see you guys. We want to hang out. We have a lot of fun just hanging out in those Zoom meetings, and we can pack those Zoom meetings. A lot of people can go and hang out online. So, yeah, yep. make sure you guys join us for that. Yes. All right. We are going to bring out on the stage Mr. Dylan Smith. Here we go. All right, crew. Welcome to this week's version of Worship of the Week, uh, a time where we just take uh, a couple minutes and pick a few songs for you guys to listen to and reflect on throughout the week because we want worship to be something more than just a time in church when you stand up and sing songs and then sit back down. We want it to be a lifestyle and a reflection of our lives and our surrender to Jesus. So our three songs this week for you to find on any streaming platform or YouTube or anything like that. The first song is called Call Upon the Lord by Elevation Worship, and it's talking all about how we will call upon the Lord in any time of struggle or anything like that. Song number two is also by Elevation Worship, and it's called Grateful, and it's all about being grateful for the things that God has done in our lives no matter what we're facing, whether it's coronavirus or um, school difficulties or not being able to go to school or missing your friends, and it's all about being grateful in every season of that. And the last song is a song we do in big church a lot, and it's called Glorious Day, and it's a song just about straight praise and God for dying, dying for us on the cross and everything he has done for us. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that these songs encourage you if you listen to them this week, and I'm so stoked to actually meet you guys in person, hopefully soon. Pastor Jesse coming to you again with a message. Um, we are in a series called Gold, and where we're talking all about different sports analogies that we see in the Bible. And um, we've been talking about some interesting ones about running the race and things like that. And this week we're looking at a passage in 1 Timothy, um, this letter that Paul wrote to his disciple, his protege, Timothy. So if you guys have your Bibles at home, I want you to open it up to chapter 6, verse 12. That's what we're looking at. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. And it says this, all right? Actually, I'll give you guys a second to, uh, to find it. Um, so this is this interesting passage of Scripture where Paul is, like I said, Timothy was, was his disciple. It was someone that he was raising up in the Lord. And so he's encouraging him in his faith. So he uses this interesting sports analogy to do that, okay? Um, and remember, Paul and Timothy, they're living in the Bible times where they were really familiar with, believe it or not, the original Olympic Games that happened back then. These Olympic Games, they had stuff like running, they had um, different kinds of sports, but one that's really interesting, they actually had these combat sports, these fighting sports. So keep that in mind as we're reading this. Okay, it says in verse 12, fight the good fight for the true faith. 
Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you, which you have declared so well before many witnesses. This is a famous passage of scripture. I, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, but, but it says that fight the good fight. It's such a good thing to just, I mean, just when you wake up in the morning, you should be thinking of that. All right, I want to be making sure that I fight the good fight today. And we're going to unpack what that actually means. Um, so when, when I was in middle school, there was uh, this kid in my neighborhood who <laughs> we would, like, play on the trampoline, okay? And we, we would kind of, like, like, play wrestle. But this kid, for whatever reason, it would always turn into um, – he was no longer playing. Like, we would start out just kind of play wrestling, and then at some point, he would start actually trying to wrestle me with all of his might. And I was, like, a lot bigger than him, but I, I clearly distinctly remember he would get, like, super aggressive and start to, like, try to attack me. I'm like, whoa, okay. And, and I just clearly remember this kid was a scrappy fighter. He would, like push against me with all of his might and try to wrestle me to the ground, even though I was a lot bigger than him. And I remember thinking that was so interesting that he was fighting so hard. He was fighting with all of his intensity. And this passage of scripture, that's actually what Paul is encouraging Timothy to do, not in the literal sense of saying, I want you to wrestle and fight in like the, a physical way. He was talking about a spiritual battle. He was talking about fighting for the faith. And just to, to dig into that a little more, what, what, this picture of what he's creating, in those times, there were actually three combat sports that took place in the Isthmian Games, uh, which were like the Olympic Games that, that they would have been familiar with, okay? And so these three combat sports that were, that were uh, really popular at the time were, the first one was called Pygmatia, Okay, I don't know if I'm saying these right, but Pygmatia, this was like boxing. It was straight up, they would put on leather gloves and they would box. This is, in Jesus' day, this is actually what they would do for sports, okay? Boxing, the second one was called Palais. And this was straight up wrestling. Guys would be wrestling on the ground exactly like what we see today in wrestling. And the third one was really interesting. It was the most dangerous one of all, and it was called Pancration. This literally was like ancient MMA, full contact sport. It was involved wrestling. It involved boxing, kicking. Anything was game. In fact, this was super dangerous. People would die all the time playing this game. And so when Paul is talking about sports and, and using these analogies, like he used a race analogy before, and, and now he's using an analogy with, with uh, fighting, he, there, you want to picture in your mind the things they were familiar with. They didn't have the NBA. They didn't have the NFL. They didn't have these kind of sports, football, basketball, baseball, whatever. But they had these kind of games. And so he's thinking of this contest where people are wrestling and with fighting with such intensity to overcome their opponent. Now take that imagery, and I want you to apply that to our Christian life. What are the kind of things that we as Christians need to be fighting for? And, and what are we fighting against? He's encouraging Paul in his walk with God. He's using this imagery, fight hard, fight with great intensity and struggle for the faith. What was he talking about? The first thing I want you to consider is the fact that we are in a spiritual battle. That's just true reality of where we are at. I know it's kind of crazy to think about, but we are in a spiritual battle all the time between light and darkness, goodness and evil, heaven and hell. We are in that struggle as human beings all the time. It says in Ephesians chapter 12 verse, sorry, chapter 6 verse 12, it says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Doesn't that just make you think of like Star Wars or like Lord of the Rings or something? But that's actually true. We are in a spiritual battle all the time. The devil wants so badly to destroy your life. I know that's crazy to think about. But there are things going on around us all the time in the spiritual world. 
And so we need to, wh whatever we're going through in this life, we need to remember that we're in a struggle. And that struggle is a spiritual struggle. And we want to be like living in our, in, not in the flesh, but in our spirit, pursuing God with everything we've got. The very first and foremost thing we, we need to do is to take care of our salvation, to make sure that you have placed your, your faith in Jesus Christ and that you will be saved for all eternity. That's first and foremost. And then we need to be living a godly life and pursuing God. So what do these, these battles look like? This, these, um, this spiritual battle we're in can take on so many different forms, right? There are so many things in this life that we come up against that are just life struggles, life battles. Some of these things can be really like physical things, like, um, like a bully at school or, or maybe being bullied online. That is a struggle. That is a battle that we face. Sometimes we have physical problems we're dealing with headaches or health issues or, or mental health issues. Sometimes maybe it's, it's a, a struggle of finances or something. Maybe you or your family are struggling financially and maybe thinking like you might not have enough money to go to college. There are a lot of things that we face as battles, as struggles in this life. It uh, could be a bad sports in injury or something that's preventing you from playing your favorite sport. We are in a battle. And, and that battle takes on many forms. And so it's important to remember that as we consider these things and, and, and what Paul is talking about here is um, all of these different ways that we are fighting. And then uh, the, the second thing Paul encourages Timothy to do, he says, Paul, or he is not encouraging him just to walk in his faith. He is encouraging him to struggle for the faith, the truth of God and the way of Jesus. In other words, Paul is saying to put forth great effort to live our life in a way that brings glory to God. Again, he, he's not saying here that, that we're, we're fighting in order to get to heaven. We're not struggling our way through life to earn our way to heaven. That's not the battle. That was, your salvation is secure as soon as you place your hope in Jesus Christ and you place your belief in him. But this life is a struggle. It is a battle. And he's encouraging Timothy and again, us, through this letter, that we need to be in the fight. We shouldn't just be on the sidelines of life just saying, you know, whatever happens, happens, and I guess I'll just, you know, just do whatever I want. No, we need to be fighting against the sin in our life, fighting the struggle of all of the things that we face. And the way that we do that, first and foremost, what I want you to think about is we want to fight the fight the way Jesus did. And what did Jesus do to fight the battles of life? He walked in obedience to God. He obeyed God's word, even though he was living it. So his encouragement, the encouragement to us is to be obeying God's word. That's how we obey God, is by following his word. It says in John chapter 6, verse 38, um, Jesus said, For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me, simply to do what God asks us to do. That is how we fight the fight. And the second thing I want you guys to think about, um, oh, sorry, to back up for a second. The way that we fight the fight is it looks like fighting for our purity. That is one thing in the battles that we fight for. Guys, there is a struggle in this life to live a life of purity for God. And to not fall into the temptations that the world offers us. My encouragement to you is to follow what God's word says about our life and remaining holy and walking in holiness with God. Pursuing him by fighting for purity. We want to fight for truth. Guys, there is an attack on truth these days. People want to tell you all kinds of lies. We see it in social media. We see it in the news. We see it in our textbooks sometimes. But God's word is our standard of truth. We have to stand on God's word and fight for the truth of God's word. We want to fight for justice. We want to fight to become men and women, the men and women that God want us to be. We want to fight for those things. And um, the primary way, the, the primary weapon that we have in this, in this battle, in this fight, is God's word and prayer. Prayer is a powerful thing. I cannot 
talk to you guys. I, I cannot explain how powerful prayer really is. I think only when we get to heaven are we going to understand the true effectiveness of our prayers. But God's word encourages us all over to pray. Pray for our own lives. Pray for the lives of those around us. Pray for the world. It moves, it moves things. It changes lives when we pray. And so as we fight, as we struggle in this life, it's not a physical struggle against an opponent, but we struggle by staying in God's word and by prayer. Those are our primary weapons. So the second thing Paul encourages Timothy to do in this verse um, is, is he says, hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you. And again, Paul is not suggesting that Timothy can't acquire, um, he, he can acquire his eternal life through his efforts. That's not what he's saying here at all. No, Timothy was already saved. He, he already possessed eternal life as a free gift of God. But Paul, what Paul was saying to Timothy is he wanted him to experience more of this eternal life that he was already living in. He wanted him to experience that in the here and now. What Paul was saying is, you have eternal life. So hang on to that truth. Start living in it now. Don't let go and start believing the lies that you're not saved, that you're not going to heaven. Guys, we, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are living in eternity now. Even though you're on this side of heaven, you live forever. It's so mind-boggling. You can hardly wrap our mind around it. But So we need to start living now as if we will be living forever and start living in eternity and to hang on to that truth. That's what he's encouraging him to do. Hang on to that truth whenever you're fighting these battles, whatever you're going through, no matter what your circumstances, you got to place your mind and say, you know what? It doesn't matter what I'm going through. I'm going to live for eternity and to hang on to the truth of God's word and the truth that we are eternal and we get to spend eternity in heaven with him. Um, I love what it says here. This final encouragement I have for you guys is Philippians 3, uh, verse 14. It says, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, eternity, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. We want to be pressing on. Just forget the things that, that lie behind, whatever was holding you back strain forward for what lies ahead. So my encouragement to you guys today as we're thinking about this and just thinking about this amazing verse of fighting the fight is that as believers, we need to be putting forth intense energy and effort in our fight for the faith of Christ. As we take hold of the eternal life that is available to us right now. That's my encouragement to you guys. And, and the last thing I want to do, I want to um, read to you this same verse that we're looking at, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, but in the message version. I love how, um, how it says it here, okay? It says, but you, Timothy, man of God, run for your life from all of this. In other words, all of the things that he talked about before from, from uh, love of money and for material things and all of these things that can hold him down. Paul says, um, run for your life from those things and pursue a righteous life, a life of wonder, faith, love, steadiness, courtesy. Run hard and fast in the faith. Seize the eternal life, the life you were called to, the life you so fervently embrace in the presence of so many witnesses. That's my encouragement for you guys today. I hope you guys got something out of this and that if you are feeling in any way just bogged down by life and almost like that imagery of a wrestler who's been just like taken down to the ground. In ancient Ro um, Rome, in these, uh, these Olympic fights, the way that, they, that an opponent won is when they, they got the person down to the ground and the person had to put an index finger up, basically saying, I'm out. I'm done. You got me. You bested me. I'm done. And, and that's how the other guy won. In our struggle for faith, my encouragement to you guys is to never give up. Never call it quits. Never give in 
to the lies of the enemy that tell you, you know what, this thing you're facing is too big for you. It's too hard for you. Just give up. Just give in to temptation. Whatever it is you're facing, I want to encourage you that God is there for you. Jesus loves you, and we have his word to follow, and we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us when we accept Jesus as our Savior. And he encourages us to pray. Pray through all of those things you're facing, whether it's this coronavirus situation or some personal health issue or, or anything you're going through. God's word has the answer for us, and it's found in Jesus Christ. Will you guys pray with me? God, thank you for this letter from Paul to Timothy that we can take for ourselves. And Paul said it so well when he said, fight for the faith. Fight the good fight. Don't give up. Never give up. Never give in. In your struggle against sin, in your struggle for purity, and in your struggle to live out the life that God has called you to. So I pray that everyone who hears this today would be encouraged by this and that they would, whatever it is that they need to fight against, they would fight harder. Not to earn their way to heaven. It's not about that. No. But because heaven is our future, that they would fight back so that they could live this life to what God has called them to do. I pray this in Jesus' name. We hope that you guys love that message today. And as you're thinking about it, we hope that you guys found something really encouraging about fighting the good fight. It was really nice talking with you guys, and we hope to see more of you. So please look down below and hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so that you see our messages when we post them, and then we can see you too. All right, we hope to see you guys again next week. Hope you have an awesome week. Bye. Bye.